Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the SCCM 1910 new features and some improvements that were made. Uh, last week I did a video on how to upgrade to 1910. Today I want to talk, uh, go into more details about some of the features um, in 1910 and how you can, how where where those features are, what they look like in the console. So with that being said, on the list here on the screen, you'll see Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Um, is now Microsoft Management Solutions are now part of the Microsoft Endpoint Manager brand. So that includes Intune, Desktop Analytics, Autopilot, other features in the Device Management and Admin Console. So um, I'll go more into detail in a different video on how to do the Intune integration. Um, so I'll show you that. And then also um, reclaiming the sudo lock in Config Manager 1910. Suppose you're suppose you're performing an important task and Config man, configuration manager console stops responding. You can then and you get locked out. So sometimes some of those things get locked out, and so normally or a file gets locked. And so there's a there's a SQL query that you can run to unlock that and then launch. So sometimes that happens. So now in 1910 there's a better recovery of that. Um, so it basically expires after 30 minutes. And then the lock part of Config Manager uh, will then, you'll be able to relaunch it without having to run that SQL query. So that's kind of a nice little plus if you have that kind of issues. I don't I see that in my environment or in the other environments that I work in. And also, in the, we can extend and migrate on-premises site to add Microsoft Azure. So that's one of the things uh, that here on the second item on the list. Um, so again, you can uh, Microsoft has introduced a new tool that helps you programmatically create Azure Virtual Machine VMs for your Config Manager. The tool can can also install with diff default setting sites, um, roles, and passive site server management points and distribution points. Um, again, you can do that within the co-management, like a co-distribution point where you can add that. And I'll actually create a separate video on how to add a distribution point in Azure in a later video. Um, and then also the Azure migration tool, um, you know, I'll show you, uh, there's a link to that and I can show you that in a different video when I go over that. Um, and then also you can, um, the desktop analytics uh, in Config Configuration Manager. Um, the desktop analytics is now uh, is now generally available. The desktop analytics is a cloud connected service that integrates with SCCM. It offers insights and helps administrators make more informed decisions about how to deploy updates to Windows endpoints. So I can go over that in a separate video. Again, you can also run task sequences with high performance plans. So if I just minimize this here. Um, so if you go into a task sequence, let's see if I have a task sequence in here. Oh, I gotta log back in to show you that. So I'm just gonna highlight a few things and anything that requires a little bit more work, I'll do those in a separate video. And again, if you have any questions or want to see a video about something specific with the new version of um, SCCM, the 1910, just let me know in the comments section below and I'll do a video on that. Um, so yeah, so application catalog, operating system, task sequence, and I, yes, I do. So let's say uh, I go edit, and in here there should be a performance tab. Um, actually, it's in here, so you just go to properties and go to performance and click on that. So that way, um, you know, also, uh, so again, if you have any questions on that, um, let me know in the comment section. That's what that is. And then also the new feature of Microsoft Deploy Edge, Microsoft Edge version 77. So now you can do that with 1910, but you have to do it 1910 or later. Uh, and then I'm going to create a separate video on how to create and deploy a Microsoft Edge using SCCM. And, uh, and I may do that next week. Um, and then also, I'm in, a, and I'm in the process of restoring my WSUS and resyncing that with my SCCM. So I can't show you the updates side of things, but there are some additional options for third party update catalogs where you can which is a good feature, which is in this version, you can configure and synchronize schedule for each catalog independently when using the catalogs that include categorized updates. You can um, also configure synchronization to include only specific categories updates to avoid synchronizing the entire catalog. So that's kind of a nice plus. Whereas before you had to synchronize the whole thing. Now you can actually select specific ones you want to synchronize, which is kind of a nice option rather than doing the whole thing. So again, I'm going to be showing that in a 
separate video. Um, also, BitLocker. Now, BitLocker was, um, you could integrate BitLocker, and I have on my website and my, my nectech.com. I've got all the prerequisites. In fact, let me just go there real quick right now so you can see what I have there. Just give me one second. I go there. Now, if I'm going to bring my website over here. Now, in my website, you'll see guides. And you'll see um, InBAM right here. So if I click on that, come on, there we go. So in here, there are like, um, in my website, I don't, I don't know why this is slow again, but my new system's coming in the next couple of weeks, so yay, so we can get things rolling here again. Um, now, of course, I've got, I'm synchronizing my w, my WSS, so that could be why. So in here, you'll see in here, you'll, it'll talk about the standalone server components, the requirements for MBAM and all that stuff. But with the 1910, it's going to be more integrated. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. This out of the way. Um, and I can go over that in another video. Oops. Uh, let me bring this back up. Uh, but basically, you'll be able to uh, deploy uh, the BitLocker client to management window devices, manage device and encryption policies, uh, combine compliance reports, administration and monitoring website for key recovery, and a user self-service portal. So that'll be nice. So most of the BitLocker management op is an optional feature in SCSIM 1910, so you must enable this before. And where you would go enable this, you go into administration, and you go to, at the very top, you go to updates and service, oh, not that one, under features. And you'll see right here, BitLock manager, manager at, um, ability to manage BitLocker drive encryption. So you can, uh, right now it's um, off, but if you want to turn that on for t testing, you just right click on this and just say turn on. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm going to do a separate video on that when I incorporate uh, this feature with the InBAM series that I'm doing. And so those are kind of like the new features. In terms of improvements, there's also improvements in the, what was released, I think, in 1906, which is the, um, the um, 1906, which is the uh, improvements to application groups. So you can do, um, now I don't have that turned on yet. I think that's another one. See, this is another one. So you can turn that on here, which is called application groups. You enable it, and that'll give you the ability to have users. Uh, users can uninstall the application group in, in Software Center, and you can deploy an application group to a user collection. So that's kind of nice. So those are some of the improvements. Again, I'm going to do a separate video on how this works. Um, and then you can also um, do a task sequence search, copy and paste. Um, and you can also set the default uh, keyboard layout in WinPE. So if I go into the uh, boot images, boot images, and I click on one of these, and I go to properties, and then when that comes up, you'll see under the customization tab, You'll see right here, enable, um, you can see right here, set the default key layout. Now I can go and set the default key layout, which is keyboard layout, which is really nice. Um, so you can just add that there. So that's where the setting is if you want to turn that on. And then you can also import a single um, index of an OS upgrade package. So like, let's say you're doing a Windows 8, 1803 to a newer version, like 8, 1909, and you want to do an upgrade, you can, you can, um, you know, you can import a specific index of that. Um, you were able to do that in 19, 1906, but this is more improved in 1910. So, ported. so that's kind of a nice plus. Um, and then also some of the console management improvements. So like, um, let's see, we go into, um, let's see, overview, let's do administration. Uh, let's go to security. Um,
So under console connection, you'll have something that says start Microsoft team. Now I don't have teams installed on my uh, primary site server, but if you did, you can be able to uh, use, um, use this to replace the last connected time column and um, the ability to message other configuration manager administrators through teams. So you can message other administrators through teams through here to kind of let them know, like here's some, some things that we're seeing here in the console. So that's kind of a nice, you know, improvement. Um, and of course, software updates is the last part, which is I can't really show you today because I'm restoring my um, WSUS. Uh, it's possible to use the delivery optimization and uh, distribution points in Windows updates content for clients running Windows 10, 1709 or later. Um, and then so you can also use deployed um, as an update file filter to automate, automate, automatically deploy uh, de deployment rules. So that's kind of, and I'll show you that in a separate video. So I'm going to do some more videos on there. Um, so again, I just wanted to kind of go over some of the, now the console looks pretty much the same. As you can see, I've got 1910 installed. Um, you go to about config manager, you'll see 1910. And like I said, there's some features I still need to turn on and um, enable so that I can take advantage of some of those features. And I wanted to go over those in more detail in a separate video, but today I wanted to just go over them a little bit more detail to kind of explain. I'll also put a link in the Microsoft website in the comment section below so you can review and re uh, read those a little more, more further detail. Um, and it also my link to my website, so I'll be putting some stuff up there as well. Um, again, if you like this video, uh, give, give this video a thumbs up. Again, stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe because I will be um, adding some more of these um, videos in the future in regards to going into more depth of 1910. And if there's something specifically you want me to uh, do a video on, just let me know in the comment section. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.